Thanks for that. For more analysis on the situation in Iraq, we're joined by Michael Schenk. He's the Associate Director of Legislative Affairs at the Friends Committee on National Legislation. Michael, welcome back to the Thank show. You. you know, what kind of response could we see from the U.S. in the West, if not troops or arms? Do you think this could be more of a humanitarian issue? Well, I wish. Unfortunately, what the White House is saying is that airstrikes and drone strikes are possible. General Dubik in the Washington Post saying we should hit them hard from the air and from the ground. Certainly the Pentagon sending a carrier into the Gulf, as many have reported, and, and many in Senate in the Foreign Relations Committee and the Intelligence Committee are supportive of airstrikes or drone strikes. That would be devastating. Uh, certainly a humanitarian response is needed. But there's a whole bunch of policies that weren't pursued in the last 10 years by the US government that should be now. We can certainly support Maliki in them. Um, but unfortunately, where Washington is headed is in a military first response. But it sounded like the US president said earlier today when he made a statement that he almost wants Iraq's prime minister to kind of come up with a solution on his own or leaving right. it open for that. Right. So this is Washington's trend, right, to blame Baghdad or blame Kabul for mistakes after we withdraw or shortly before we withdraw. Here's the problem with Washington's policy in Iraq. We aided and abetted the marginalization political economic marginalization of Sunnis. We gave Baghdad to the Shia leadership. We didn't assert an active integration of Sunni leadership in Baghdad. Instead, we gave them munitions and monies in the Ambar province, the Sons of Iraq, the Awakening Council. So we had kind of a two-tier approach. Instead of forcing the hand then for some kind of political reconciliation, now we're seeing that blowback against us here. And also, you know, Obama is blaming Maliki and the security forces for not really standing up saying, hey, we train them, they can sustain themselves now, but here's the problem there, we gave about 20 billion to that training with little regard to sustaining those forces long to the future. So they have hundreds of thousands of forces now, but who's gonna fund them? Same thing happened in Afghanistan, so it's no surprise that many of them in Iraq are defecting, switching sides, because frankly, the support isn't there anymore. Do you think that some of Iraq's immediate neighbors will take action before anyone else because they have more at stake? Absolutely. So regionally, you're seeing Iran very invested in Iraq. You're seeing Saudi Arabia and any other Sunni states in the Gulf very invested in Iraq. And with many other states, certainly Syria is a good example of this. The region is very fluid. Boundaries are very fluid. And so Saudi Arabia cares a great deal. The U.S. could pressure Saudi to do the right thing, since, since they're clearly invested. And we could partner with Iran on this and future deals. This would be a great opportunity for a diplomatic process. Let's go back to al-Maliki. Do you think he could be forced to compromise uh, within his country, or do you think he would do it on his own? Well, I, th I think he could absolutely be encouraged by Washington, Saudi Arabia, Iran. Here's why. We've got 10,000 American officials and contractors still in Iraq, so he's got a clear financial investment. Obviously, our oil companies are clearly invested in the north, where it's very oil-rich, and another reason why ISIS was keen to take over to Crete and Mosul because of the oil there, but also because of the water. Um, so yes, we could force his hand. The Iraqi ambassador to the U.S. is saying, we've got this, stand back. So there is kind of a detente here where Iraq is saying, we've got this. U.S. is saying, all right, stand up. And unfortunately, that's not going to forge a productive road forward. Do you see Iraq splitting three ways? And if so, would that make more sense? Certainly hope not. I mean, that's what Vice President, then Senator Biden, proposed, splitting up Iraq in three ways. We didn't emphasize political reconciliation or inclusion, political or economic, for Sunnis then. We have an opportunity to do so now. I think a lot of it's resource-based. Um, but if we, if we pull out all our diplomatic stops with Saudi Arabia and Iran, I think there's a real opportunity for a reconciliation process, resource sharing, resource distribution, whether it's water or oil. Um, but we can't have a laissez-faire, hands-off approach, which is what Obama, Obama was intimating, nor can we pursue airstrikes and drone strikes. That's going to kill many civilians and make it worse. Michael Schenk, as always, we appreciate your perspective. Thanks for joining us Thanks for having me. here on